defiance. Men don't get along. Men don't go along to get along. Men do what's right. Men speak up. Men rock the boat if we have to. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I need advice on handling the relationship with my father. Um, my father was around 10 years old when his father was assassinated at their family-owned grocery stores. My father grew up without a father figure, per se, and since he was the oldest, he had to take care of his siblings. Uh, he was the oldest of four boys and four girls. My dad immigrated to the U.S. in the 1980s for a better life to help his family. I believe my dad had many traumas from losing his father at an early age. He would be absent a lot from many of our family events. As I grew older, I realized he had many behavioral issues, I believe all of which stem from having a lack of father figure growing up. Regardless of all this, he still showed me a lot of great things like hard work, perseverance, humility, self-education, belief in oneself, and many other great things. His shadow side was that he was very stubborn, aggressive, and absent with our family at times. Unfortunately, my dad passed away with a heart attack four years ago, and he's no longer with us. My question is, what's the best mindset to have moving forward after my dad's passing? I really want a life of peace and prosperity. How do I break up this uncontrollable urge of not having my father anymore, just like my dad experienced as a kid when he was growing up? So the first thing I just kind of want to point out, and it's just a, it's a rant that I've been meaning to give and just something that I, I think I need to say, and I think it will be resourceful to you also, is that we got to recognize that there's a difference between mommy love and daddy love. And because the world we live in is such a matriarch, because it's so mommy ruled, uh, we, we tend to think and we've been taught that daddies are supposed to love us the same way mommies love. But mommy's love and daddy love is different. Daddy's love is a more of a is more about what he can what he does for you. It's a bit of, of a quieter, more stoic, more practical love, where mama's love is more of an emotional love. It's more of a feeling love. And we live in this world now where people are saying that their dads were absent. I get this a lot, and I even thought this too, man. I used to think this dumb shit too, till I grew up and realized that that's not true. I used to think that, oh, because my dad didn't didn't like snuggle me the way my mom did, right? Mama smothering love, um, that my dad didn't love me as much as my mom, but that's not true at all. There's mommy love, and mommy's love is okay for mommy, but when the world says, oh, my, fa my father never gave me the love I need, what they're really usually asking or what they're hankering for is their daddy to love them the way their mommy loved them. Daddies love in a different way. Men are different than women. Moms and dads are different, and it's okay. And sometimes it takes us a long time, as I know it did for me, and, it, and I think it's, it's happening for you, to recognize that even though, my, even though our dads don't emotionally smother us like mommy love, right? Mommy love. And I see a lot, a lot of good dads. I see a lot of good dads out there, but they try to love their, their children like a woman would love them. They try to love the, their children like a mama would love them. And then it becomes basically uh, like a, a, a lesbian couple raising the children. It's like it's basically two women. And so what ends up being uh, eclipsed in that situation is what a father can actually teach. And there are all the great things that your father taught you. Hard work, perseverance, humility, self-education, belief in yourself and many great things. Now, of course, we live in a world now where, you know, women are strong and independent. They don't need any men. And the world has taught them all these things. So you could have you, you could you could get it in a very um, in a fake way from mommy. Right. Mommy could teach you all those things, but she can't really teach those things because she doesn't embody it the same way. She does. She most women want to embody a, when they try to be a dad. Right. When. I'm talking negatively about how when men try to behave like women, but it goes the other way around. When women try to love, try to try to be like another dad, like I'm the dad, right? You know, because there is no dad. It's a perverted kind of uh, education. It's it because the woman has to deny her femininity. She has to harden herself, and then she can start to display in a mediocre way all the characteristics of the man that should have been there to teach those things. So it's great that your dad was there to teach you those things. That's daddy's love. Dad's love is to teach you hard things. Dad's love is there to make you uncomfortable. The ultimate, the ultimate, I guess the foundation for receiving that love is that the dad is there, right? And it sounds like your dad was there. 
He said he was absent sometimes, maybe because he's working, maybe because he needed some time away. That's another thing that's very masculine is this needing time away. I need space. Men need space in a different way that women need space. Women don't need the same kind of space because women are community. They're community relationship driven. They know themselves through the relationship, through the mirror of relationship more so than a man naturally does. And so if your dad was just say working long hours or working on the weekends or sometimes he was busy, that's not a thing to denigrate or to look down on or to be mad about your dad. Now, if your dad was out there boning other women, your dad was starting other families behind your wife's back. If your your dad was was basically a, an effeminate, uh, an effeminate promiscuous uh, blue pill baby boy who's out there, you know, can't control his urges. Well, that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing, and that's a weak man. But a, but a, but a, but a but a father that's that teaches you hard work and perseverance and humility. That's a good man. He might not give you what mommy gives you, and he might not. Uh, and mommy oftentimes will 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 speak poorly about dad because dad doesn't love you the way I do, right? The way mommy loves you. But it's because we live in this world of perverted gender roles, and women don't know how to be women, men don't know how to be men, and that's a big part of what we're trying to do right here. We're trying to we're trying to right the wrongs and put us back in our place. So it's good for you to know that your dad was a good man. Your dad did what he had to do. He did everything he had to do. You call his shadow side stubborn, aggressive, but those are great traits too. There's times when you need to be stubborn. A strong father will say no, even if everybody is begging him, right? The wife, the children. Look at me. Sometimes, sometimes I'm like a sole soldier in my home because I got three daughters and my wife and they all kind of trying to lean me one way. They try to weaken me. And I'm like, no, I'm stubborn. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't like what I say. I don't care if you disagree with me. I'm doing the right thing. And this is the right thing, right? Stubbornness is a good trait. It's good that your dad taught you how to be stubborn. Maybe it wasn't for the right things at certain times because we're not perfect. But the fact that he was teaching you stubbornness is a good thing. Men need to be more stubborn. Men need to be more stubborn. We need to take back our stubbornness because this world teaches us that progressiveness means open borders, means no boundaries, means everything goes, and that's a recipe for chaos. Men need boundaries, and we need to be stubborn about our boundaries. We got to stop letting ourselves be, be pushed around by women in the rainbow crowd. Then they got to stop. We can't let that happen any longer. We got to be stubborn, and we got to be aggressive. You got to be aggressive in your speech sometimes. You got to be aggressive in your attitude sometimes. You got to aggressively say no sometimes. Your dad sounds like a good man. Your dad sounds like he did what he had to do. He immigrated to the U.S. to start a better life for his family. Of course, you know your dad better than I do, but from all intents and purposes, based on what I read here, your dad was a good man. He was a good man. He was a good man, and that you need to implant that in your heart. I think it's important for you, especially now that he's passed, because that's the seed from which your masculinity will grow is your is your is the way you think about your father. We can't, we have to stop as men thinking about our fathers the way the world teaches us to think about our fathers. And we have to stop thinking about our fathers the way our mothers think about our fathers. Even though my parents are together for 50 years and my parents love each other. If I listen to what my mother thinks about my father, I'm going to have a perverted view of him. and I'm going to have a perverted view of myself. I have to see my father for what he is through my masculine eyes, through my masculine ears. And I couldn't do that until I became a fucking man because I was a beta male bitch until I was, until my mid thirties. Took me a long time to realize that my father, man, in all his toxic ways is exactly the kind of man that this world needs. So moving forward with the mindset with regard to your father is, uh, your father passing, you want to do your best to speak nothing but praise of your father. Speak nothing but good words about your father. Speak nothing but hard work, humility, perseverance, self-education. Take all those things. Take the best of what he taught you, embody it, and then teach that to your children. You know, one of the great, I, this is my opinion, but it's a fact, right, is that one of the best things that we as fathers can do for our children, fathers in particular, is to talk highly of our fathers. 
when, if you want your children to respect you as a strong alpha male provider, leader in your home, you have to talk about your father that way. If you denigrate or talk bad about your father, the children are going to have, that's a, that's a, that's a notch in the armor. There's, there's a leak in the dam. And they're going to start thinking, oh, if my dad thinks that way about his dad, then he, then where, what do I think about him? I speak nothing but praise about my father to my children. Even though my father's not a perfect man, even though me and my father fought a lot when we were young, even though I didn't agree with my father a lot when I was young, even though I was wrong, my dad was right. And I had to admit that. I had to admit that. And now I embody that. And I speak that way about him to my children. I speak that way about him to you guys. And what does that do? It's not about, it's not about licking my dad's boots, right? It's not about, it's not about, and you know, this world, they hates authority. This world hates authority and it hates authority structure. But for authority structures to work in their most beautiful way, there needs to be a respect going uphill. You have to respect your father. You have to respect your parents. And with your father dead, you have to speak respectful language about him. You got to speak about him respectfully. You say, how do I break this uncontrollable curse of not having my father anymore? Just like my dad experienced as a kid when he was growing up. You become the father. Now it's you to carry the pattern. Now it's for you to carry forth all that he taught you, all the great things he taught you. But if you see somewhere that something could be done better, do it better. Just be careful. Just be careful. Just be careful. Because the world will have you believe that you need to do things better, meaning like a woman. Oh, you could do things a little bit better by being more, what are some of the things they say? Be more vulnerable. Vulnerability is a female trait. That's why women stay on the inside and men go on the outside. Because men protect what's vulnerable. We protect what's important to us. And women are vulnerable. Don't be vulnerable because the world says that's a, that's a trait. Don't get along. You know what? As, a, as another masculine trait that the world calls uh, toxic, defiance. Men don't get along. Men don't go along to get along. Men do what's right. Men speak up. Men rock the boat if we have to. We're not egalitarian, right? We don't work in circles. We work in hierarchies. And it's best to edify your father, those above, right? And, of course, God the Father. And we teach our family to pray as a result. So that's it, my man. I think I think I know that you may have some hang-ups and you know, some sadness, of course, losing your father. But at the same time, Carry his name with all of the fame it deserves. Edify your father. Keep a picture of your father for your children to see. Have a picture of you with your fathers for your children to see. And then father's love, even though your father is, is above, he, you know, he passed away, that father's love will trickle down from God the father, right? Your father's father. Let me, let me show you how you bring back your father's father who was shot and killed in the grocery store. You bring that father, that, that love back into your family from your grandfather by memorizing or remembering your grandfather and remember your father. And you put yourself in association with them. If you have a picture with you and your father, put that picture up in your home so your children can see. If you have a picture of your old grandfather that died before you were born, put that picture in your home. There was a time that it was important. There was a time when people would have pictures of their ancestors in their home. I keep a picture of my grandfather. We moved, but I used to keep it right here. So all my stuff is in drawers right now. I got to find it. But I'll always keep a picture of my grandfather and my father. And it was a picture with the two of them. It was my father, like as a young man, right? And his father was next to him. It was the two of them. And I always keep that picture over here next to me because that's my, that's my upline. That's my respectful lineage. That's my hierarchy. Those are my authorities. I still carry the authority of my grandfather who did what your grandfather, what your father did. My grandfather came to America in the 1970s. He had like 12 kids in Belize. He came here, he drove a truck. He sent his money every single week for them to come one at a time. And then they all became citizens. I can't forget my grandfather's love. I don't know my grandfather. My grandfather died when I was like nine years old. 
but I know my father and I know that my father did what he can do, the best that he could do based on what his father did. And I know myself because I'm going to do the best that I can do based on what my father did and what his father did. Fathers! We need more fathers. We need to come back to the father culture. You know what you call father culture? Patriarchy. We got to come back to the patriarchy. Patriarchy literally translates. If you look up the word as father's rule. Right. This is why the world, the feminists and all, they're so against patriarchy, because it literally means father's rule. But they want us to live in a mommy rule culture. And we do. We live in a mommy, mommy's rule culture. And it sucks. So work with that a little bit, my man. I'm grateful for you. I'm happy for you. I think things are going to work out great for you. You just keep your father, the honor of your father alive in your heart, bro. And I think things are going to work out well. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.